Well, I too have traveled and gotten dysentery, and uh, one of my favorite things for that is, um, especially with Giardia lamblia, is golden seal. Now, I know golden thread is stronger, but I like golden seal just fine. If you can get real golden seal powder, it's amazing. In about 24 hours, it's gone. And I t totally agree that it's not something you want to take all the time because it does tend to kill the good bacteria along with the bad bacteria. But just for a short period of time, it's really nice. It also tones the inside of the lower intestine so that Giardia lamblia has little suckers that stick onto the mucous membrane, and they're not able to hold on anymore, so they not only die, but they go away. And the whole thing's over with. Now, as far as the health of the lower intestine, probiotics are not something that I think should be necessary. If we're eating a whole plant diet, principally raw, then our intestine is going to be very happy. And what happens is the fiber and the indigestible starches that go there are the food for the bacteria. When the bacteria get this food, they're able to create short-chain fatty acids, typically butyrate, which is a short-chain fatty acid. Butyrate is a principal energy source for the cells lining the lower intestine. When they get this energy source, they're happy. They're not irritated. They're not as likely to get infected or damaged in any way, and no probiotic is needed, no prebiotic is needed, except for what's in the food. So I would prefer that people can eat a whole plant diet, principally raw, and then that's going to make their intestines so happy that it is extremely rare for anything to bother it. Now, of course, if you're taking antibiotics, that's going to bother it. But again, it shouldn't take long for your intestinal bacteria to reorder itself. Typically, it only takes three days for enough generations of these bacteria to mutate to eat whatever it is you're feeding them. So they're happy with fiber, and they're very unhappy with what's left over from meat digestion. So keeping our stomachs happy is really not that hard. Thank you. I tend not to ha hardly ever give antibiotics, ever, except if somebody has a blood infection and that can move to septicemia. I consider that a really important like emergency level. Uh, and if that's the case, I'm going to refer them to somebody who really specializes in that uh, situation r rather than me. Now, we all make choices. I um, was in a... Uh, many years ago in a motorcycle accident where I lost 9% of the skin. Now, that's enough to get you hospitalized. I refused to do that. And uh, besides not wearing clothes for two weeks because I couldn't be touched, um, really use the basic herbs that ultimately healed it with no real scarring. Okay? Now... That's just an example of what well, you have to have a certain amount of, uh, let's say, intention with that. The other thing that's um, helpful, both for uh, the gastrointestinal, but for other things, as you mentioned, golden seal, comfrey, and slippery elm are phenomenal for dealing with intestinal inflammation in general. You've got to be careful with the golden seal. You can't take too much, but a little bit is really good and you know uh, colitis which is more chronic infection is in, in important one of the things that I do uh, is also recommend fasting and if somebody has an intestinal fasting doesn't give food to the infection whatever that is so those are just c kind of some things to, to think about in India, we didn't have much things, having lived there for seven years. And we did things like, you're not going to want to hear this, but urine fasting. And it was the most powerful healer for all the different ranges of, of intestinal problems, as well as the... Explain to the uh, why. Explain to why. The antigens Well, I don't want to get too detailed, but it works. And also for all kinds of skin infections and so forth. Well, I'm going to go there. Uh, so those are some things. Now, why do I stay away from antibiotics? From, from a diabetes prevention point of view, if you have 
five courses of antibiotics in 15 years, you double your rate of getting diabetes. That's just an example of that. So it's really important to have a, a strong, let's say, um, intestinal uh, flora. Uh, personally, I don't really take the supplements so much, but I do do kimchi that we do on a regular basis, which I think builds the prebiotics and the probiotics as a way of maintaining that, because we are faced with so many different stresses on our, our gastrointestinal tract. So something simple like one or two tablespoons of kimchi. Um, if your uh, person has trouble with uh, heat too much, just the sauerkraut. So those are some very simple ways. Now the final thing is that when everybody, anyone has an acute infection, really we want to build the immune system. Because it's already compromised uh, and so we want to, I focus a lot, not only on the topical or the specific herb for the specific infection, but also build the immune system, which I used a variety of Chinese herbs to build the immune system in the midst of it. My preference is prevention. We're right now talking about this virus from China. So, no, uh, cor uh, corno. Coronavirus, yeah. And we want to build our immune system as part of that whole story. It's when we're weakened is when we're susceptible to a variety of systemic infections. Um, and the local things, again, you, you, there's so many different things we can use, but we want to build the immune system really uh, so the infections can't really get started. And the antibiotics tend to undermine our overall immune resistance as well. So that's kind of the approach I take. Uh, it's also important not to impose that on anyone for a variety of reasons. They have to be willing to go that direction. But it does work, and I literally in you know, 47 years have not really used antibiotics, uh, but people have gone for that. that so those are... Um, I think some of the, the things to consider in the picture of that. Okay. Yeah.